what's underneath your feet? It might be tempting to think that everything underneath the surface is just rock, rock, and more rock for thousands of miles until you eventually pop out the other side of the planet. But in reality, there's a lot more going on inside of our planet with multiple dynamic that are constantly affecting one another, some of which are vital to the survival of life on Earth as a whole. So, what exactly is going on underneath the surface? Before we get into that, I'd appreciate like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Okay, so what exactly makes up the Earth as a whole? Well, geologists tend to split the Earth into four main layers, the crust, the mantle, and the outer and inner cores. Let's work our way from the top down, starting with the crust. This layer is by far the coolest and thinnest of all the layers on Earth, being only about 30 miles or 50 kilometers thick on the continents, and as thin as 5 miles or 8 kilometers thick underneath the oceans. However, just because it's the thinnest layer doesn't mean there isn't anything interesting going on with it. The crust is broken into massive pieces known as tectonic plates, which float on the mantle because the crust overall is less dense. Over long periods of time, these tectonic plates move extremely slowly, in addition to causing the continents and oceans themselves to move, interactions between them are the foundation for natural landforms like mountains, valleys, and volcanoes, as well as natural disasters like earthquakes and tsunamis. Additionally, the temperature at the crest increases extremely rapidly as one heads downward, going from the temperate climates we know and love to furnaces that are in some places hotter than 1000 degrees Fahrenheit or 600 degrees Celsius. One interesting thing about the distinction between oceanic crest and continental crest is the fact that continental crust is significantly older than oceanic crust. This is because since the oceanic crust is so thin, it is constantly recycled through the mantle over just a couple hundred million years, which is not that long on geological time frames and much shorter than the Earth as a whole, which is about 4.6 billion years old. By comparison, continental crust gets recycled far less frequently, so most of the rock on the continents are in the range of several billion years old with some rocks in Australia and Canada being believed to have remained undisturbed for over 4 billion years, which is again almost as long as Earth has existed. Moving on, the next layer down is the mantle, which is significantly bigger than the crest. At about 1,800 miles or 2,900 kilometers deep, the mantle comprises about half of Earth's radius and over 80% of its volume. This part of Earth is solid for the most part, but over millions of years, it moved. This movement is the primary reason why plate tectonics move over time, since the plates are going along with the extremely slow movement of the mantle below. The mantle itself is significantly hotter than even the deepest parts of the crust, with some parts getting as hot as 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 4,000 degrees Celsius. The reason why the mantle is able to remain in this semi-solid state is because the pressure exerted from everything above it is immense, which, for weird reasons I won't get into here, allows for substances to remain solid or li liquid at high temperatures. The mantle is also the ultimate source for pretty much any volcanic eruption, as this is where the magma to produce such an eruption comes from. Some volcanoes, such as the infamous Yellowstone supervolcano and the volcanoes that make up the Hawaiian Islands, are theorized to be made from hotspots that extend all the way down to the core mantle boundary, thousands of miles slash kilometers underneath the surface. This is possible because the mantle actually has a form of convection going on, where temperature and pressure gradients allow for molten rock to circulate between deeper areas of the mantle and areas closer to the surface over long periods of time. These convection cycles are what's responsible for the mantle's movement to begin with, and subsequently the movement of plate tectonics as a whole. The next layer down is Earth's outer core, which is about 1,400 miles or 2,200 kilometers thick. This is the first layer that is well and truly liquid, being a sea of molten iron and nickel that is superheated to temperatures that can reach as high as 14,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 7,500 degrees Celsius near the bottom, temperatures which exceed those found at the surface of the sun. Perhaps the most important thing to note about the outer core as a whole is that the nickel-iron combination that it possesses make up the backbone of Earth's magnetic field, which protects the Earth from solar flares and cosmic radiation. If Earth did not have a magnetic field, radiation from the sun and other sources would slowly strip away the atmosphere and make the planet inhospitable to life as we know it, eventually becoming a similar planet to Mars, which retains a thin atmosphere but has very little heat transfer, is on the whole extremely barren. As a result, we have the outer core to thank as one of the primary reasons as to why life has been able to survive and flourish on Earth's surface. Besides the sit 
there's nothing particularly interesting about the outer core as a whole, so let's move on to the final layer of Earth's interior, the inner core. The inner core is really one of the smaller layers of Earth, having a radius of about 750 miles or 1200 kilometers, and similar to the outer core, it's made predominantly of iron and nickel. However, what separates the inner core from the outer core is the fact that unlike the outer core, the inner core is solid. This isn't because the temperatures associated with the inner core are much cooler, as they are still a rather toasty 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 5,500 degrees Celsius. But once again, the pressure from the entire planet above makes it solid rather than molten. This raises a really interesting question, however. Why in the world is Earth's interior so unbelievably hot to begin with? Well, there are two main reasons as to why Earth contains what is basically a mini sun in terms of heat. The first reason is leftover heat from when the Earth initially formed. Simply put, the numerous collisions that Earth endured early on trapped an enormous amount of heat inside the planet, heat that still remains to this day. The other main reason is the slow decay of trace amounts of radioactive elements inside the planet, which produces an extremely significant amount of heat as well. However, this extreme heat content won't last forever. As the initial heat from the planet's formation gradually dissipates and there becomes less and less radioactive material to decay, the core will gradually cool down over billions of years. A side effect of this is that the inner core is actually very slowly growing as the liquid outer core freezes and becomes part of the solid inner core. This process happens at about a millimeter per year, which isn't a lot over human time scales, but over the span of two to three billion years, this will be enough for the entire outer core to freeze solid. Since the liquid outer core is what powers Earth's magnetic field, this process will effectively shut it down once the entire outer core freezes. By this point, however, life on Earth will most likely already be extinct thanks to the sun gradually getting hotter and brighter, which will in turn make Earth's surface far too warm for liquid water to exist to begin with. As a result, nobody will be around to see the aurora borealis disappearing for good. And on that positive note, that's all I have to say about Earth's insides. As always, I'd appreciate you like the video, subscribe to your channel, and hit the notification bell to stay tuned for future content. Thanks, and have a great day.